All right, this is fifth grade module two, lesson 26. And in this lesson, students are gonna have, I'm chewing some M&Ms, that's why I'm going. <laughs> okay, so we are going to be dividing decimals following that really that standard algorithm, although I'm gonna continue using the place value references to make sure that our students are building number sense as we're going. So this is actually kind of a cool problem. It says create two whole number division problems that have a quotient of 9 and a remainder of 5. Justify which is greater using decimal division. So we get to create whatever division problem we want as long as we're using two whole numbers. And I'm going to arbitrarily choose that I want one of them to be divided by 8 and the other to be divided by 10. I could have chosen any two whole numbers in the world. I chose 8 and 10. But in both of these cases, we want the answer to be 9 remainder 5. All right, and we want this one to be 9 remainder 5. And then we're going to use division using decimals to figure out which one of these answers is actually larger because 9 remainder 5 is not necessarily equal to 9 remainder 5. For example, in order to get this answer to be 9 remainder 5, we're going to kind of work the problem backwards. 9 times 8 is 72 plus 5 is 77. So there is our division problem, 77 divided by 8 is equal to 9 remainder 5. Parents and teachers, you may need to pause this video and let your students work that out to make sure it's correct, make sure they understand what's going on. Similarly, we're going to go over here, we're going to work this problem backwards. So 9 times 10 is 90, plus 5 is 95. And so now we have two problems both have the same answer of 9 remainder 5, but we want to figure out which one of these answers is larger because they are not the same. So we're going to use decimal division. So we're going to do 77 divided by 8, and we have 7 tens divided amongst 8 groups. You can't do. So we're going to think of 77, and this is 77 ones divided amongst 8 groups. So that's going to be 9 in each group. That's not a surprise. We subtract, we get our 5. Now, we're not going to write it as a remainder. What we're going to do is we're going to think of this 5, and I'm going to extend it a little bit. We're going to think of this 5 as 50 tenths. So 50 tenths divided by 8 is 6 tenths. So that means we've got a decimal right here. We need that decimal right there. So that's going to be 48 tenths. We subtract, we're going to get 2 tenths left over. And we could keep going. We could think of those 2 tenths as 20 hundredths. And 20 hundredths divided amongst 8 groups is 2. So we've got four hundredths left over, and we could think of those four hundredths as forty thousandths, because tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So we've got forty thousandths, and we could think of those forty thousandths being divided amongst the eight groups, and that means there's going to be five in each group, and we have nothing left over, so our quotient is 9 and 625 thousandths, or 9.625. Now, over here on the right, 95 divided by 10, boy, that's really easy. We happen to know from a previous module, we already know that the answer is going to be 9.5. But let's just kind of march through the process just a little bit here. 9 tens divided amongst 10 groups, can't do, so we're going to think of this as 95 ones 
So 95 ones divided amongst 10 groups means there's going to be 9 in each group. We have 5 left over, but we could think of those 5 ones as 50 tenths. And so far, that kind of sounds like what we said over here, but here's the big difference. So 50 tenths divided amongst 10 groups is going to be 5 tenths in each group, and we're going to be done. And so the decimal has to go there because that's 5 tenths. So we've got 9.5 over here. We've got 9.625. Which one's greater? In this case, it turns out that this guy, 9 remainder 5, is greater than this guy, 9 remainder 5. That's because as a decimal, we get 9.625, and that 6 is greater than this 5, so we know that 9.625 is greater. So we're just going to do some standard kind of division. We're going to start with 95.9 divided by 22. And I'm going to veer a little bit from the Eureka Math or the Engage New York method. I'm going to estimate 22 to be 20. And I'm going to think of my skip counting, 20, 40, 60, 80, etc. And we're going to divide. So we're going to think of this as 7 tens divided amongst 22 groups. We can't do. Uh, so we're going to think of this as 75 ones divided amongst 22 groups. According to my estimation here, let's see. One, two, three. I'm going to estimate three times. So over here on scratch paper, I'm going to do 22 times 3, and I'm going to get 66. And just to be sure, I'm going to do 22 times 4, and I get 88. Well, 88 is too much for 75, so we're going to go to 3. So my estimation, my quotient is 3. And we know that that answer is 66. And now I subtract, and I get 9 left over. So now I'm going to think of this 9 ones plus these 9 tenths. I'm going to think of this as 99 tenths, which means we're going to have a decimal right here. So 99 tenths divided amongst 22 groups well, we know the next group would be 100, so that would be 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I think that's going to be too much, so let's do 4. And we happen to know the 4 already. It's over here. So the quotient is 4. We know we're going to get 88. And when we subtract, we get 11. And let's keep going, because these 11 tenths can be thought of as 110 hundredths. I'm going to extend this bar a little bit. All right, 110, and let's see. I have over here, one, two, three, four, five. That looks pretty decent, maybe six. I know that's too high, but these are estimations. Let's stick with five. Let's see what happens here. So we're going to do 22 times 5. Let's see. 5 times 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 5 times 2 is 10. Carry the 1. Or add the 1. We get 110. Hey, that's exactly what I wanted. So my quotient is 5. We know we get 110 because our scratch paper says so. So there is our answer. Now how are we going to check our work? Well, we're going to check our work by multiplying we're going to multiply 3.45 times 22. So let's zoom in, and let's do 3.45 times 22. And I'm going to do this pretty quickly because we get the hang of this. I'm going to first multiply everything by 2. So 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. Now when we're multiplying by this 2, that's really a 20. So I'm going to add a 0 here, and then we're going to multiply everything by 2. So 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1, there it is again. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, and then 2 times 3 is 6. So we add, we get 0, 9, 15, carry the 1, and a 7. 
And because we have two decimal places, we know we need two decimal places in our answer. So our check is 75.9. I'm going to zoom out and look at that. 75.9 is exactly what we wanted, so that means we did our math correctly. Now here this is interesting. It says use the equations on the left to solve the problem on the right. So the idea would be if we know this is 520.3 being divided by 43 and we know our answer is 12 1. So notice, teachers, I lined up the decimals right on top of each other. That's very deliberate. So the idea would be if our next problem over here is 52.03, so the same digits but the decimals in the wrong place, or in the different place, not the wrong place. So the idea would be where would our decimal be now? Let's use some logic. Well, this is a big number and this is a small number, which means if this is our big answer, then our, our answer over here needs to be smaller using logic. Using that logic, it's going to be 1.21. And that seems to make sense now, doesn't it? 43 goes into 52 one time. So that's how we know our answer is 1.21. And the last problem for this video, we've got the Aeon. Boy, the Aeon Center in Chicago is one of the world's tallest buildings built in 1973. It is 1,136 feet high and has 80 stories if every story is the equal height. Usually when we're talking about equal things, we're either going to be talking about multiplication or division. And in this case, it's division. So how tall is each story? So we're going to divide. 1,136 divided by 80. All right, and so we're going to use our skip counting. Skip counting by 80s is pretty easy. Just think of your your eights: eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, and then just stick on a zero. All right, and so using our skip counting, a thousand cannot be divided by 80. So we're going to think of 1100s being divided by 80. Nope, but 113 tens looks like it's about one time. So, not one, it doesn't look like it's about one. It is one. I thought I was thinking these were estimations, but they're actual, actual values, right? And so 113 minus 80 gives us 33. And since 33 is less than 80, we're good. And so now we're going to bring down that 6. And we can look over here, and if we want 336, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 times. And that's going to be 320. We subtract, and we get 116. Uh, but we're not done, because we can think of that 16. I'm going to extend this a little bit and bring down that zero as 160 tenths. So I'm going to put that decimal right there. And we can see skip counting, it's two. Our quotient is two. That's 160. So we get 14.2. And what is 14.2? 14.2 is each floor or each story is 14.2 feet tall. And that wraps up 5th grade module 2, lesson 26, using that standard algorithm to divide decimals.